how to beat the bosses of Dark Souls 2. Tips and tricks from the Game Masters at the Backloggery. Hey you! Yes you! Do you want to be the king or queen of Drangleek? Not so fast there! Dark Souls 2 is the toughest home video game since Ninja Gaiden 3. You'd better have your wits about you, or else you won't survive to see the throne. This video cassette guide will give you the knowledge that you need to topple the biggest and baddest baddies in the world of Drangleek. Are you ready? Let's get right to it. Roll away from the stomp attack if you're fighting up close. The last giant swipes at you with his hands, so keep at a safe distance when using long range attacks. After some time, he might decide to grab his other arm to extend his reach. Don't underestimate this downward strike. Last giant moves slowly so you can attack quickly. This was just the warm up. The real Dark Souls 2 begins here. He's quick and can dash up to you in the blink of an eye. Circle around toward his shield side to most effectively dodge his attacks. You can use the arrow machine for a big hit, but it may be tricky to safely use this strategy. A second or third player will help a lot in this fight for keeping Purser distracted and unfocused. Most of Dragon Rider's attacks are single slashes, but watch out for this devastating two-hit combo. Observe our game player's perfect dodge timing. Careful, there's also a rare three-hit combo. There's barely enough room for the two of you, so don't take a chance when you're too close to the edge. Lucky for you that Dragon Rider didn't ride his dragon to this fight. This strange creature has two bodies, one on each side. They move toward you quickly, and the water filling the room makes movement difficult. So we recommend calling up some friends to divide their attention. With two sides that can attack you, it's tough to fight up close, but you can take advantage of their paws after they finish a combo attack. The Ruin Sentinels are some mean dudes. This can be one of the tougher fights in the game, especially if you can't equip a strong shield. If you find yourself here too soon, explore other areas first and gain some levels. Attempt to defeat the first Sentinel on the starting platform without falling. Falling is going to hurt, but you'll want to fight the other two Sentinels down below. Extra characters can help divide their attention. Watch out for the tornado spin that they use to close in on you. Take advantage of their slower attack rate, but don't lose your cool and don't get careless. This room is especially dark, which means you'll have a lot of trouble targeting the boss from a distance. You can light the room if you've got the key from Belfry Luna, but even our game player here didn't know that top secret. Here you can see that player two cleverly used a flame butterfly to improve visibility. The boss will leap about in an unpredictable fashion, but with patience and perhaps some extra players, you will be victorious. Watch out, the scorpioness will cast spells that hone in quickly on your position. But with good dodging, they can be avoided entirely. When up close, watch out for her spear attack. When she digs underground, avoid the clouds of dust, because that's where she will resurface. If you dodge this attack or stand on the stones, you will have the advantage to finish the fight. There's a lot of enemies in this fight. Moving too far from the fray can make you vulnerable to long distance magic shots and leave you with few options for counterattacks. Don't let yourself get into a position where you can't see what the magicians are doing. We recommend getting in close to the magicians and prowling Magus, staggering them with quick attacks and dealing with the rest of the crowd later. There's no sense in running too far away from Freja. The laser beam shot is devastating and it's dodged much more easily up close. Simply run to the other side. There's a face on both sides and it doesn't matter which one you attack. Bring friends to the fight or a nearby friendly character named Boy. 
They can help take care of the little spiders or occupy one of Frage's faces. We recommend fighting up close and getting familiar with how she moves just before attacking. Get just out of the way while she leg stomps, patiently waiting for your chance to move in again. Lure either of the bosses on the sides behind a pile of rubble so that you can avoid the magic shots from the boss in the center. As you defeat each skeleton lord, smaller and weaker skeleton enemies will appear and begin to attack. One strategy is to pace the fight so that the battlefield doesn't become overrun. This fight can become chaotic very quickly if you aren't careful. Bring along some friends so that the army isn't attacking a single player all at once. This big guy is slow, and it's very easy to keep at a distance if you have ranged attacks. He can roll over and swipe at you. He's extremely vulnerable to all kinds of attacks. Try fire magic and fire weapons for effectively beating him to a pulp. Listen up. This is an essential tip that will make the fight against Mytha much easier. With your torch lit at the campfire midway up the windmill tower, burn the nearby spinning windmill so it stops. This clears out most of the poison in Mytha's chamber. Now you just have to be careful of her attacks. Fire, in particular, is especially effective. Watch how quickly our player finishes the battle with his fire sword. Smelter's steely defenses can cause this fight to take some time. You'll often find yourself dealing less damage than expected when he is setting his sword on fire. Our game player didn't have the most effective weapons or spells for this fight. Smelter can be avoided as you move through Magma Mansion, but defeating Smelter does allow you to rest at the campfire midway through this dangerous level. Before challenging the old Iron King, climb this well-hidden ladder to discover a super-secret campfire. But you may not need it with our tips for this battle. Don't let yourself get smashed by his pounding fists, but take advantage of his paws to attack or drink a healing potion. When he spits fire, quickly dash to the other side of the platform. He can even shoot fire from his hands. Observe how much damage can be caused by a well-timed Soul Vortex spell. Dragon Rider is back. And this time he's brought a friend. Not a problem if you brought along some friends of your own. The room is larger than the one you fought him in before. And your attacks are also a lot stronger now. Don't get cocky, but Dragon Rider should have brought his dragon to the fight instead. By the way, did you find his hidden campfire shortly before the boss fight? Careful now, magic spells are not recommended for this fight, unless you use them with great caution. The boss's shield reflects them right back at you. You've got a long chance to attack when he pauses with his shield at the ground, but soon a shadow knight will break out of the shield's mirror. Deal with this new threat first, then attack the boss again. Learn the perfect timing to dodge his wide magic shot, shown here. This strange old witch wears an invincible frog suit. The boss can only be damaged through the opening in the face of the frog suit. It's easy to keep your distance, and we recommend that you do so to avoid the arm flails and poisonous mists. Don't be afraid to fight up close if you need to, but exercise extreme caution. Dodge Velstot's powerful hammer attacks. The battle becomes much tougher after he pauses for a few seconds to power up with a purple glow. He'll both deal more damage and take less damage. At this point, if he ducks, get away from his front or be ready to dodge. The wave of dark magic balls that he'll fire are super dangerous. At last, it's Vendrick, the king of Drangleek. Hold up there. It's almost impossible to actually defeat Vendrick right now. The secret to making Vendrick vulnerable is not covered in this video cassette guide. 
Instead, go straight to the back of the room and grab the king ring. This opens up exciting new areas for you to explore. You're almost to the end. In the basement of Drancleek Castle are the Watcher and Defender of the Throne. Both of these foes are incredibly weak to fire. Be careful to not walk too far into the back of the room or else you might find yourself rolling into your grave. Check out this pro strategy. Our game expert defeats both bosses with only two castings of the Firestorm spell. You're even invulnerable to damage after a certain point during the casting of the spell. At last, you finally get to meet Dragon Rider's dragon, and now he's hungry for revenge. Don't target Guardian Dragon when you're in a phase of avoiding his flame attacks. You'll be able to run away from the flames much more easily. Attack when Guardian Dragon is on the ground. Stand to his side or back if possible. Magic spells like Soul Spear Barrage and Soul Vortex are super powerful against this large boss. Don't attack the friendly Dragon King. He gives you the power to travel back in time to defeat the ruler of the giants. As you approach the boss, learn where the fire shots fall and run for safety from the rolling statue head. We don't recommend keeping your distance from Giant Lord. He'll have the advantage with his extremely long reach. Watch how much easier it is to circle behind him and avoid all of his attacks when you fight right up at his feet instead. One final boss stands in your way in the basement of Drangleek Castle, Dark Queen Nishandra. This is a tough fight because it's challenging both up close and when at a distance. If you're far away, she'll fire a devastating laser beam shot. Up close, the blobs of darkness will rapidly curse you, reducing your HP at an alarming rate. It's possible to attack these blobs up close to dissolve them. But if you can lure Nishandra away from the circle of dark blobs, you can safely and quickly finish her off. Congratulations, you've done it. Now you sit upon the throne of Drangleek. What happens next is up to you. Did you find any of the secret bosses like Old Dragon's Lair or Authority, the Royal Rat? Seek them out and set out on a new adventure from the beginning. Thank you for watching How to Beat the Bosses of Dark Souls 2. When you need the edge over the toughest video games out there, you can count on the How to Beat Video Cassette Guide series. Be sure to fill out the included mail order form to get even more of the tricks you want to know, straight from the Game Masters at the Backloggery.